Hey, what's up and thanks for tuning in. Lately, I've received a ton of requests asking me to demonstrate how I adjust a guitar's truss rod and the action or string height. So today, I'm gonna show you how I go about adjusting the truss rod on guitars I'm working on whenever necessary. I make 99.9% .9 of my string height adjustments, which is the distance between the strings and the frets by adjusting the truss rod. I almost never adjust the string height from the bridge because I feel you can run into more problems. The truss rod runs the length of the neck from right here up to about where the neck meets the body. And on this guitar, the adjustments are made right here at the headstock. A lot of guitars have the adjustment point right here where the neck meets the body, sometimes hidden under a pick guard, but the same principles are going to apply and I'll address this scenario as we start making adjustments. If you feel like your strings are too high off the fretboard, especially around the 12th fret area, then you probably have too much bow or relief in your neck and the neck then needs to be straightened by tightening the truss rod, turning it clockwise. Less commonly, you may notice your strings fretting out or buzzing heavily down here around the first to fourth fret. And in this case, you probably have too much back bow and you'll wanna loosen the truss rod by turning it counterclockwise. Ideally, you want a straight neck with just the tiniest bit of relief. And for a nice low action like I like, a small amount of fret buzz is acceptable when you strum your guitar acoustically because you're definitely not gonna hear that through an amp. It's all about finding the sweet spot, most likely with a little trial and error so that most importantly, our strings feel great to play along the fretboard, the guitar is easy to play, and the bow or relief looks appropriate, and the string buzz we hear is acceptable. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So a buddy brought this guitar to me saying the strings felt too high off the fretboard, and so we're gonna want to lessen that bow or relief by tightening the truss rod, turning it clockwise. First, I'll remove the truss rod cover with a Phillips head screwdriver. Then I'll use a standard or at least standard ESP guitars, four millimeter Allen wrench. Almost every new guitar comes with the proper tools needed to adjust everything on that particular guitar. But if you don't have it or whatever, again, in this case, it's a four millimeter. And we're gonna fit this in right here. Sometimes it takes a little feeling around to get a solid connection going. In fact, I feel it almost always does. <laughs> Look right in there. A lot of time you can't see it. See like, and that's not even gonna be enough so I can turn it. So I can like kind of just fit it right in there. Okay, so I've got a solid connection. And then you make very small adjustments because that's all you really can do with this amount of space we have here, you know, in between these strings. It's not like I could just go all the way around or anything like that. Uh, very small. Uh, so I know this guitar needs a pretty substantial adjustment. So I'm going to start with four equal turns and I'll keep track of that number for reference in case I need to back off some or continue tightening after I check the results. So it's gonna be like, I think I was going clockwise there. That was one, felt pretty good and tight. Two. Three. and four, and that feels pretty tight there. And now that I've done that, I'm going to check the neck again by sighting it down the neck from the headstock. The strings, which are always straight as a ruler, are my reference point. Any curvature we see will be within the neck. If the neck looks nice and straight in relation to the strings, maybe with just the tiniest bit of relief, then we're probably good. And here's another technique I learned from a guitar Jedi over at ESP, my man Todd Binder. So I'm gonna put my left index finger and fret the first fret. And then I'm gonna take my thumb of my right hand and fret the 17th fret. And then I'm going to touch down on the 12th fret with my index finger of my right hand and judge the distance between the string and the 12th fret there. You want that distance to be that of like a business card. And that's if you don't have a ruler. And I don't know the really the measurement you're supposed to have if you have a ruler, but anyways, who's got a ruler for that stuff anyways? Uh, so you like, I'm touching here and you just want it to be like a business card. Now, who has a business card lying around either? I don't know. And it doesn't matter anyways, because you can't put it in there and, and like do the same test without another hand in there. So you just kind of have to visualize that thickness. Feel me? All right. So 
To me, that is perfect. There's just a tiny bit of, of space above the fret and the string there. It's not touching the fret and uh, we're good there. Oh, if the truss rod adjustment on your guitar needs to be made here where the neck meets the body, the same principles apply. If your neck has too much bow, tighten the adjustment point by turning it clockwise. If you've got too much back bow, loosen the adjustment by turning the Allen key counterclockwise. And it's just the way you're looking at it. If you're looking at it from this angle here, that's clockwise, this is counterclockwise. If you're looking at it from here, this is clockwise, and that's counterclockwise. So that felt good to me and uh, now I'll tune up and give this guitar a few strums and see how it feels and sounds, then go from there. If there are any dead spots on the neck uh, where it's like buzzing out, I'm, I may have over tightened and I want to reapply some relief by backing off or loosening the truss rod. Or if there's still too much relief, I'll tighten again with another turn or two. kind of check every fret marker. Make sure nothing's buzzing, nothing's dead. And uh, this guitar is feeling, looking, and sounding good, and it's ready to play. Uh, if you're curious, this is an early 2000s ESP LTD Viper Baritone VB300. It used to belong to me, but now belongs to my good friend George. He asked me to set it up for him and provided me with these awesome strings to use from a company I had never heard of called Stringjoy. And I've got to say, these are really, really nice strings. I noticed that the moment I touched them, they just had a certain touch to them. Really, really cool. Even the packaging was remarkable. but. Unfortunately, that extra nice packaging is probably built into the price, you know? Um, but what's really cool though, is that I checked out their website and you can design your own set with exactly which strings you want, material, gauges, everything. It's completely custom, so that's cool. And uh, if you're interested in seeing more of my setup techniques, you can. I have a video demonstrating my complete string changing method on this very guitar, as well as intonation videos, Floyd Rose videos, and more. And I'll leave a link to my string changing series playlist in the description below. Also, I've been loving this thing lately, the Nomad music tool here. Check it out. I talked about this a little bit before, but just an awesome thing for getting into the nooks and crannies of your guitar. I showed this off a couple videos ago and dudes were hopping all over it. I'll leave a link in the description below for where you can find this too. It's only like 12 bucks and using my link helps the channel at no additional cost to you. Really cool, the Nomad tool set here. Very awesome little guitar maintenance tool there. Um, George also recently popped in these EMG Active Fat 55s, which are supposedly, uh, you know, like the classic Les Paul 1955 pickups. George loves doom metal and fuzz pedals and all that stuff. So this guitar with these 55s and these thick 13 through 62 strings in a B standard tuning should do the trick. Let's give it a strum and see how it sounds. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool, I think, man. Super heavy, super heavy indeed. I appreciate you watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the video and check this out. If you're willing to go as far as you have and watch a video on doing your truss rod and making those adjustments, you might as well take it a step further and watch this video right here where I break down intonation to make sure that your guitar is sounding 
as in tune and as good as it possibly can. I mean, you've come this far, might as well take it that far. Watch this one right here. Cheers, thanks for watching. I'm Rob Arnold, signing off.